Welcome to this edition of the Ultimate Combat Experience. I'm Mike Stidham. I'm the co-host. As always, this is a little ball. Hey, Johnny Ritchie. Johnny, I just, I'm almost speechless at the card we have in store for you tonight. Mike, it's so funny. We always talk about how are we going to outdo ourselves? What are we going to do to top this uh, card? And I, every single finals, I tell you, we've done it again. We've done it again. We've got some of the top fighters in the state of Utah and from all across, well, the world stepping inside this cage tonight, Mike. It's going to be exciting, uh, down and dirty. These guys are getting here to mix it up. There's a kid backstage that speaks only a few words of English. He's from Russia. Come all the way here to fight some folks. We brought some folks in from Hawaii, Nevada, Wyoming, all over the place. Right here, some of the top, well, in fact, all of the top Utah fighters are on the card tonight. Name a few of them here. Well, Mike, we've got, uh, well, you got Dustin Collins, you got Oliver Bradstreet, you got the bird dog, James Birdsley, Mike Durant, Jeff Moody, Sean O'Connell, Travis Marks. There's so many to list, Mike. I could go on and on and on. We got a chick fight for you tonight, too, but our main event, is hands down the rematch of the best fight we've ever had in arcade. Yeah, Mike, we named it the fight of the year and then the fight of the UCE period. He had Mike, Mad Mike Aram versus the bird dog, James Birdsley. And I tell you, it was a knockdown drag out, Mike, and I hope we see the same thing tonight. Well, it's gonna be a lot of action before we get to that. It's the ultimate combat experience coming right at you. State fighters coming all the way down from Wyoming, Ty Hamlin. We've seen this kid before. Pretty tough kid. Who's he fighting? Well, he's fighting the demon, Dustin Collins, Mike, a guy that uh, a lot of his training partners hold in high regard. They say the kid's got more heart. He's not afraid. He'll, he'll just keep going and going and going. You really have to destroy this kid to beat him. And he's just a good guy. He's easy to cheer for. Welterweight no holds bar. Check it out. You're fighting Dustin Collins tomorrow, man. What are you going to have to do to beat this kid? What, are we, what can we expect to see tomorrow? I need to hit him more times than he hits me. That's exactly what you need to do. Is that going to happen tomorrow? I don't know. Last time I predicted it didn't turn out that well, so I think I'm just going to do it. It doesn't matter how many times he hits me. It matters how many times I hit him harder back, so. This is true. So uh, prediction time. How's this fight going to end? It's going to end with the demon on his back. There you go, right there. Shake hands. Best of luck to both these guys. See you tomorrow night inside the cage. Sometimes it's just a simple game of mathematics, Johnny. I hit him more times than he hits me. It's as simple as that. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Well, you're exactly right, Mike. And Ty Hamlin started that smack talk session off by uh, telling us that he is going to hit Ty more. And then, I don't know. What is he? Do you think well, he can do it? I, Ty Hamlin's got the perfect nickname for his fighting style. He's a slick fighter. He's not an imposing guy. He's not uh, going to outstrength you or outpower you. But he is a pretty slick fighter, and he can catch you with things. And another very appropriate nickname, the Demon. Yeah, yeah, Dustin Collins. Collins likes to uh, just get after him, Mike. Uh, in his last couple fights, he's walked out of there the winner, but I tell you what, his face looked like he went through a punching <laughs> machine, you know? He always does look that way, and he always finishes in his post-fight interviews with a big sunglasses on because he's got to cover up some cuts or, or black eyes. <laughs> well, Mike, and I think those those uh, glasses now sponsor Dustin Collins. Well, so you, you know, go. I think they found the right guy to sponsor, the guy that's <laughs> always going to have black eyes. <laughs> well, here we go. What Dave Sully said he's the referee for this one, Mike, and... Well, you know, uh, themselves a little bit. Well, Ty Hamlin's got a definite reach advantage, and it's kind of an interesting strategy that uh, see uh, Collins uh, operating under here. He's standing right out here at the end of where Ty Hamlin's punches would land. Yeah, and uh, Ty, you talked about him, Mike. He's being real patient. He's not really rushing in. Uh, this is the Dustin Collins that we haven't seen before, Mike. Usually Dustin is rushing in, searching for that double leg takedown, and, and nine times out of ten, he's, he's getting it. This cage is a little smaller than our sh our cage that we use in the weekly show. Excuse me, it's, it's a little larger, so a little more room for this kind of oh. stuff. Good footwork, a nice uh, solid left hand landed on the chin there by Ty Hamlin. 
And now uh, Ty's going to uh, throw some knees to the body there, Mike. Uh, possibly looking for uh, maybe a guillotine choke. We've seen he does like to throw submissions on from the standing position. Um, but he's pretty good about that. He's pretty good about getting position before he'll do that. You see right here, Dustin Collins just waiting for those knees to come in. And right there, Ty was happy to deliver one of them. Just so that's a tough spot to be in, especially if he gets his hands locked behind his back there. Uh, it's going to be a tough spot for uh, Dustin Collins. Well, he's throwing some knees, Mike, and he's landed two or three of them. You see Dustin doing his best to kind of cover him up from underneath there. But with all those double underhooks he's making it real tough he sure is making it real tough Dustin able to battle his way out and get off the, the cage there uh, a little more spring in his step now he doesn't want to get caught in that position again <laughs> absolutely not Mike and uh, let's see what he if he's gonna rush in for the take now, like I said this is really weird and uncharacteristic of Dustin Collins not to uh, pursue this takedown and, and try to ground and pound tie out I wonder if he's been training with a boxer or something he's kind of herky and jerky and a little more than we've seen in the past he's kind of moving around trying to get that boxer stance in there and and I don't know that that's the right strategy for a couple of reasons. He's given up a reach advantage, and then he is such a good wrestler. He's been, as we, as you pointed out, he's good at that right, right there. Right there, and uh, he gets to take down Mike, something that we usually see out of Dustin Collins. And now he's working in this uh, half guard, looking to. Um, kind of slither his way out of this thing and hopefully not up in full mount, Mike. Well, watch out for Slick underneath there, though, because Slick can catch you if you leave something behind. As you mentioned, Dustin Collins being very patient here, and that's that's a good sign. Uh, he's not looking for anything to, to rush there and, and more than likely not going to leave anything behind. Yeah, Mike being real patient. Uh, Ty Hamlin really... Oh, but now he pulls uh, the full mount here. Ty Hamlin's really holding on to that head, and if Dustin can set up, Mike, well, <laughs> he's going to soften him up with some of those big blows. Dustin loves to do that. He loves this posture really up high and just really drop big bombs. Uh, got a little high there though, Johnny, and uh, while well, Ty Hamlin wasn't quite able to shake him off. Yeah, he's got his hooks in there, Mike. Uh, he's, he's throwing punches. He's not even looking to try uh, to an attempt to submission here, uh, but uh, you see right there, Ty Hamlin doing a pretty smart thing, grabbing that wrist and uh, breaking down that table. Well, you know, Dustin doing a great job, though. He's got his hooks in there, and he's kind of right. Uh, even though he's high, he's, he's kind of keeping himself in good balance and good position here. And as you mentioned, he's looking for spots to hit him. With about five seconds left to go in the round. Uh, looks like we just might see a round number two. Yeah, right. you're right, Mike. Absolutely. Uh, this thing's going to end. He's not really uh, going for a submission there. He's trying to soften tie up with a... There's some a barrage, of, a barrage of, punches. of punches to the side <laughs> of the head there. And uh, we maybe to... we got more barrages when we come back. Welcome back to the Ultimate Combat Experience. If you're just joining us, you're missing a pretty dandy of a fight here, Johnny Ritchie, in the finals of the Ultimate Combat Experience here at the East Center in West Valley City. Great venue for fights, great crowd tonight. And these two guys coming out and mixing up. I have on my very unofficial scorecard Dustin Collins leading one round to zero. Yeah, Mike, and that was after a nice takedown uh, against Ty Hamlin. Uh, but right now, Mike, he's back to that boxing you talked about. I don't know if he's trying to show the crowd his hands or what, but uh, he's not looking for that typical Dustin the Demon Collins takedown. Well, certainly not, and I would certainly have given Ty Hamlin the nod for the first half of the round, but Dustin Collins got the takedown toward the end of the round and was very dominant up on top. And Boy, you, you, you just made a great point there. I just don't understand why Dustin Collins has deviated from his typical game plan so much. Well, Mike, maybe it's because they did talk a so much about punching each other, one more than the other. And uh, <laughs> Ty's just trying to reciprocate here and throw as many as Ty's throwing at him. Well, Ty is doing a great job. That jab is landing with great consistency, but he's not throwing his left hand, and I think that's why. He didn't want to expose himself for a takedown, but uh, he cut himself flat foot anyway, and uh, Dustin Collins getting the big takedown once again. Oh, yeah, Dustin Collins now inside the guard. You talked about slick, and right here you see it. Uh, Ty Hamlin's making moves. Mike is trying to get that angle, uh, get that uh, right foot up above the head here and possibly look for a submission against uh, old the demon. Trying to figure out what submission he's looking for here. He might be looking for and uh, well gosh you, I don't know he's, he's turning the wrong way. Yeah. I, I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> Maybe he's just trying to get that foot in front of that face, maybe. Okay, he's looking for some luck. Yeah, I got you. Okay, yeah. and then we, we kind of went about it the, the long way there. Yeah. Maybe he was trying to set up, set up the, the move, but uh, it didn't fool Dustin Collins at all. Dustin Collins now finds himself in full mount once again. A position once again. Uh, man, Mike, he just seems to be able to get that whenever he steps inside that guard and throws a couple punches. He 
Ty makes it real easy for him to get this full mount. I think that's something he's going to have to go back and work on when he gets home. Boy, and he's got Ty pressed up against the cage there, Johnny. And this is where Dustin Collins is so good. He's good at just keeping position once he gets it. And he doesn't, like you mentioned, he doesn't like to, to, to submit you. He just likes to hit you. Yeah, like I see, Mike, you're going to see, uh, you hear his corner there uh, calling for short elbows. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we see him. A lot of these elite guys, they like to throw those things from up there. And well, he's not throwing any short elbows. He's throwing big, big looping face. punches. Yeah. And that's what he likes to do. It's they're kind of overly dramatic. Because he, he kind of loops them around, but when they land, they land pretty hard. Yeah, but Ty doing a pretty good job, Mike, of, of keeping those uh, fists from landing. You see, right there, right there, was a good one. But now, uh, Ty, it looks like it's Dustin's like, going to try to block an arm. We've here. seen Ty come out the back door like that before. He does a good job at that. He's so long that uh, he's able to get his feet up around, and mm. now finds himself on the back of Dustin. <laughs> and Dustin just tired. Dustin just oh, tired yeah. let him take it. Yeah, Dustin, that was. You didn't see much spark in that. Uh, movement there but yeah Mike maybe he's worn out from throwing those big looping punches you talked so much well, about you can see fatigue on his face and man how many times have we seen this a guy being so dominant and then losing position but it looks like Ty's not quite going to be able to get what he wanted out of that no Mike he's got one hook in there but it's kind of lazy he just kind of flopped off uh, to the side. Time is going to run out on on a second round, and I really, you, you have to think that uh, Dustin Collins is up two rounds to nothing. Ty Hamlin's going to have to do something big here in the in the third and final round to even have a chance of winning this thing. Well, Mike be looking for a sneaky submission out of Ty Hamlin. Uh, he likes to pull him off, and we've seen him actually win in the third round when his opponent was beating on him. He ended up slipping out, catching an armbar, and ending the fight. We've certainly seen him do that, but I don't know if there's much gas in the tank for either one of these guys <laughs> for too many sparks to be flying here in the third round. <laughs> oh, Mike, uh, you know, that one-minute break it just isn't long enough sometimes. Maybe we should have given him a three-minute break. We should flip it around, have you fight for one, one minute. and rest for three. <laughs> imagine imagine the controversy that would <laughs> well, Imagine the amount of action we'd see. Oh, you would see it, Mike. More knockouts than ever, I would imagine. I'm telling you what. Well, again, both these guys are just kind of lumbering around the cage here in round number three. Not a whole lot of action <laughs> coming from either side. And that was a pretty ugly kick Ty Hamlin just threw. Yeah, Mike, can you hear the crowd? They're starting to get a little restless up there. They want to see some action out of these guys. Uh, even if they go to the ground and lay on one another, at least it looks like they're doing something. Well, they're not really doing a whole lot here. The crowd's letting them know, man, this is the East Center. You better bring a game. Let's see what you got. And you see right there, Dustin Collins had hurt enough. He's going to, he takes, gets a nice takedown. Can he finish it, Johnny, or is he going to ride it out? What do you I, think? I don't know, Mike. I don't really see him having enough juice to really put anything on that's going to finish this thing. But uh, then again, you know, Ty Hamlin's tired. He's fatigued. You know, maybe just even a little arm crank or something can uh, force yeah. him to tap out. Ty, Ty's looking for a nice, comfy spot to lay down right now, I think. He's just, uh, I think he's done just about all he's going to do tonight. Yeah, Mike. <laughs> You're right about that. Uh, Dustin throwing body shots to the body and then to the head. And then just like that, Mike uh, finds himself in this full mount position. Uh, bad news for Ty Hamlin. Very bad news because, once again, not only is he mounted, but he's just given up. Hey, he's just too tired. I don't see him having much to get out from underneath there. And he's pressed up against the cage. Dustin Collins really probably just needs to sit up and bomb, and this fight might be over. Fight, fight might be over. I tell you what, that sucks too. Is he's got him right into the corner of Dustin Collins. You hear, uh, you know, Dustin Dustin Collins' cornerman, you know, giving him advice, and that's got to be kind of a crappy feeling for well, Ty to hear yeah, all the stuff gotta, they're saying. You got to feel like you're alone in the world right now. You can't hear your corner, you can hear his, and all they're telling you is what a bad position you're in. Yeah, absolutely, and he really is. Now, like you said, I think Dustin Collins needs to sit up, uh, throw some punches here, Mike, and end this fight. But uh, well, does he have the juice to do it? No. Oh, this is the big question. Know. There you go. Well, there it is. Um, but then he throws three or four punches and gets right back down and does a little hug in here, Mike. He's, he's tired, he's too. He's tired, Johnny. He's worn out. I got to tell you, both these guys are pretty worn out. Uh, pretty good action in the first and second round, but, uh, you know, <laughs> they're just content to lay on one another at this point. Well, Mike, uh, it is it is the finals, and uh, these guys, you know, stepped up, and they've, they've done a great job in the bracket and won the fights they needed to to get here. And, you know, it's been a great fight. It's been a three-round war, uh, well, even though Ty's, I, I think, is going to be on the losing end. Uh, he's still fighting, Mike. He's not giving up yet. You're not going to tap. Ty's a kid. He's a gamer. He's going to come out and give it all he has. But, you know, he's been overwhelmed here. And I think Dustin Collins is just the better fighter, plain and simple. Yeah. Dustin Collins is a, the better fighter that's really tired right now, though. Not going to win with a whole lot of uh, fireworks to finish this fight, Johnny. But he came out, did enough, did what he had to do. He really didn't have to force the action here in the third round. No. Uh, he's going to walk away with the win. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, Mike. Is. And you see the sportsmanship between these two guys. All they want to do is uh, get some water in a bed, and that's it. Call it a night. And put their sunglasses on because uh, their future is so bright. He's got to wear shades, Mike. Oh He's got to goodness. wear shades. Dustin, the demon Collins, you are a winner. Congratulations, buddy.
Statewide Bell Bonds. If the devil made you do it, Statewide Bell Bonds will get you through it. It didn't go your way though, man. How are you feeling right now? That's a heartbreaker, but at least it went all three. That's right, you know, you put on a great show. You talked about that. You said, I just want to put on a great show. We know that your heart's in it, man. What's next for you, Ty? Hopefully fighting for you guys again. Well, we'd love to have you. You've proven yourself. Uh, this is the second time now. I want to say well, we'd, we'd be glad to have you back, Ty. This Pulse Fight interview is brought to you by the United States Army. Be Army strong. Log on to GoArmy.com. Hey, great win tonight, man. How's it feel? Feels good. Feels good. I would have liked to finish them. Had a couple chances and didn't capitalize on it. I just want to thank a couple people. First of all, I thank my wife for all her support. And uh, I'd like to thank NoniSportsDrink.com, Next Realty, and uh, Pulp and Sunglasses keep me looking good, keep the sun out of my eyes. And you are looking good, my friend. We got a little, take a nap. You got it, man. We got a little gift pack for you here. A lot of stuff, a lot of swag in there. You can uh, add it to the rest of your uh, booty there. Thank you, man. Appreciate you having me. All right, man. He did look good in them shades, Johnny. Oh, man, he did, Mike. Uh, his future's so bright that he's got to wear those shades. He's doing a good job inside this cage every time he fights for us, Mike. K kudos to Dustin. No, he absolutely is, and it's always good having Ty Hamlin come down here. Cool cat. I can't wait to get him back here and do it again. We got more of the Ultimate Combat. Don't go anywhere. In your lightweight division, we got a kid who come all the way from the islands of Hawaii, Jake Kawa'a Kawa versus Patrick Upton. What do you know about these guys, John? Well, I know that they promised me an exciting fight. They said they're going to stay on their feet. They're going to bang this thing out. Uh, Jake said, man, I, I like to fight on my feet. My ground game is solid. But if I can stand up and knock Patrick out, that's what I'm going to do tonight. And Patrick, with a smile on his face, well, said, bring it on. That's the kind of fight I want. So let's do it tonight. Which means they're going to lay on the ground and hug each other. <laughs> Possibly. Lightweight, no holds barred, check it out. If you were to try to explain to us what kind of a fighter are you, what can we see tomorrow? Excitement. Very exciting fight. A lot of contact is on. It's banging. Patrick, uh, what can we expect to see out of you tomorrow night inside the cage? Uh, I'm just going to be energetic. Um, plan on pushing the fight like I always do. Um, if he's... I mean, if he does what he says he's going to do, it should be a pretty crowd-pleasing fight. It should be really exciting. A lot of action. Perfect. And that, Patrick, we can always expect to see that when you step inside the cage. Last but not least, I need you to let him know why he's going back to Hawaii with a loss. Um, well, I don't really know anything about him, but um, he's going to go back to Hawaii with a loss because I'm going to kick his ass. <laughs> Perfect. Right there. Shake hands. Best of, best of luck to both these guys inside the cage tomorrow. Patrick Upton can't stop from giggling even when he's trying to talk tough. Yeah, Mike. <laughs> I love this kid. I love Patrick. He's a great guy. But uh, Jake the Animal Kava, Mike, uh, coming all the way from Hawaii to step in here and uh, take on that pal Patty boy. Oh, John, he's a good looking kid and comes over with a pretty tough crew. That Shogun MMA has got a lot of really tough fighters at 5'11, 155 pounds. A little bit tall for the division. Uh, Patrick Upton's kind of tall for the lightweight division as well. Oh, you're right, Mike. And uh, Patrick Upton likes to throw bombs from the left field. I know he's been training uh, relatively hard these past a few months to get ready for this fight. He just knew that he wanted to fight in the finals. So, uh, you know, he was beating up guys and, and he made it. He's oh, here. He wanted a shot to fight in the East Center more than just about anybody. This guy was harassing me for the last several months and he certainly earned a spot here. There's no doubt about it. Uh, we'll see how tough he is, though. This Jake Kawa kid, once again, you don't come all the way from Hawaii if you're coming here to get beat up. Oh, you don't, Mike. Not not one bit. And uh, I see Patrick, you can, see, you can expect to see big punches just like that. That's what he likes to do. And what? you talked about it, Mike. I thought they were going to stand up. Both of them. They, they said they were going to stand up, and now they're hugging and looking for takedowns. I just don't get it. <laughs> well, uh, Mike, let's see what happens here. Let's see if we can get a little separation. But it maybe look, looks like maybe Patrick's looking for some kind of head and arm. Oh, and he gets some kind of a takedown. That was a nice little trip there. But once again, this is not his game, Johnny. He has caught guys in, in uh, chokes like that in the past, but he's a stand-up fighter. He likes to just get up and bang, and really we're not seeing him do that. No, we're not. <laughs> you see Lonnie's going to step in, Patrick got up to Lonnie and said, hey, can I get on my feet? And Lonnie said, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> little help here. 
And the ugliest kick we've ever seen. <laughs> oh, and then he goes uh, to the mat here, Mike. And well, uh -oh. he gave up his back, Johnny. And this Bad guy, news. Kyle Kid, obviously knows what to do when that happens. This thing's on pretty tight, my friend. Oh yeah, Mike, he's got it. He's got that. Well, he's got the chin here, Mike. But if he can, no, he's got that. Does he have it? Is it on? I can't yeah, see. I, it doesn't look good for old Patty Upton. Well, Patrick's doing the right thing by holding on to that wrist there, Mike. Don't let him get that. But uh, he's making it tough. There's no doubt about it. The kid, you know, Patrick Upton. You never say die with this kid. Amazing. The way he got out of there. <laughs> yeah, Mike just kind of uh, wiggled and, and got, got into a pretty good position there and ends up inside the guard of uh, Jacob Kava. Now uh, let's see what he can do here, Mike. He's going to rain down punches or what's I Patrick going to do? I off there, you know, and you just can't ever write this kid off. But you see Kawa just looking for a, an appendage. You can kind of just see the wheels are spinning in his head. He's waiting for Patrick to throw. Oh, here comes a triangle attempt perhaps. Yeah, Mike, he's got that right arm. He's pushing it between his legs. And if he can get that, you, you're going to see his hips explode. And he's going to throw that triangle on. <laughs> Patrick is trying to gift wrap him an arm, but he didn't quite get it just yet. <laughs> nice job of passing guard, man. I, every time I criticize Patrick, he does something ah! amazing. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mike, right there, you saw he tried to rush that full mound. And uh, just as he was stepping over, Jake did a pretty good job of bucking his hips. And now he has Patrick on his back, and he's fighting him with, from inside his guard. Well, Patrick looking for a triangle there. Both guys doing a great job. A nice uh, little chess match going on between the two here. Oh, an, an up kick by Patrick Upton and a nice uh, downward strike from Kawa. Now, Mike, you talked about these guys being long and lean, and Patrick really got that leg up there and uh, landed that kick, but uh, Jake was happy to uh, land a big shot of his own, saying uh, thanks a lot, but here's one for you. Well, and he says, let's do something, fellas. This ain't a staring contest. Let's get fighting. Uh, brings Patrick up and back up to his feet and gets him back going. Let's see a practice. Oh, and you see that? Big <laughs> Patrick throws him from the top of the fence, man. A little overcommitted on that shot. And what happened there, when you miss a shot like that, you find yourself in a position like this. And uh, boy, Johnny, his head's in there pretty tight. Yeah, Mike, he's got that thing on. He's cranking on it. Uh, doing a pretty good move right there, throwing his arm right over the shoulder there to relieve that pressure. But, uh, hey, nice move by Patrick. Gets out of another attempt. Once again, you know, and we've talked about this. Patrick is a street fighter, just barely getting into the uh, jiu-jitsu game. But, boy, the stuff that he's showing us today has been very impressive. <laughs> well, I have, Mike, because I know a lot of guys who want to tap from that front standing uh, guillotine choke there. But uh, Patrick did the right thing, threw his arm over, created out a little bit of space, and... Uh, Ends the fight, goes into round two. Well, with a drop of the hands, Lonnie Foster gets his going in round two here, and this is where Patrick Upton likes to be. He likes to throw bombs and sand and trade with you, but boy, Cal is not any stranger to that either. <laughs> and you see Cal right there, Mike, with a sloppy shot by Patrick, and, and uh, Jacob made him pay for it. Mike, he threw him down, and then he landed a kick as Patrick was uh, flying through the air there. He most certainly did. <laughs> Patrick seems to mind. Maybe he got hurt from that, or he's just winded from that first round, but a little slow in getting up there. <laughs> well, Mike, he's keeping his eye on. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh, those kicks are cute. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, he just doesn't set him up, you know. I mean, he actually his kicks are not bad. If you watch him in the gym, oh, oh he got oh, caught, there, John. He's done. He got caught. That's I, it. I, this I, fight's I, over, man. Yeah. He, well, well, maybe not. Maybe not. No, well, that's well, it. Well, you know how tough old Patrick is, and gave him a little extra time there to try to recuperate, but he wasn't getting back up. Oh man, Mike, uh, he went in for a shot. Jake uh, kind of threw, uh, you know, had an underhook, tossed him in the corner, and then landed. A devastating shot that just ended him. Well, yeah, it. Patrick Upton was, was done. Jake Kawa coming all the way down from Hawaii, the, the Hawaiian Islands, to really put on a performance tonight. Very impressive. I hope we see this kid again. Hey, Mike, I have a feeling that we will. The animal steps in the house, pulls out a victory. Hey, congratulations, buddy. Hey, don't hang your head. Patrick, come back and do this thing again, man. This Pulse Fight interview is brought to you by Hollywood Body Laser Centers, the best in laser hair removal. Give them a call for a free consultation, 563-1177. That's a tough kid right there, man, and you guys were banging it out. And then uh, he landed one big shot that I think maybe pretty you up a little bit. Looks like that nose may be a little crooked, buddy. How you feeling right now? Yeah, usually um, my opponents leave a little uglier than they arrive, but tonight I guess I'm going to leave it ugly. Well, Patrick, it sounds like you're talking with a cold because your nose is stuffed up, but you know, Patrick, you're one of the toughest guys we've got fighting this show. You're such a goofball. I love you to death. But every time you get in here, you put on a hell of a show. And right there, uh, Jake's a tough kid, and he gets the victory. I want to know what's next for Patrick Upton. Um, I guess I'm going to let my face heal and then uh, come back and fight. <laughs> I like that answer. Let his face heal, come back. Hey, guys, one more time. Let's give it up for Patrick Upton, man. Thank you so much. Tonight you were good, brother. But just not good enough. Thanks for being a part of the experience. Thanks. This Pulse Fight interview is brought to you by Skull Candy. For all the hottest gear for your MP3 player, log on to SkullCandy.com. Jake Kawa, welcome to Utah. Great job tonight. Congratulations. 
Thank you, thank you. All right, on behalf of the Ultimate Combat Experience, we got a gift bag from the Ultimate Combat Girls here. Pull all kinds of different stuff, headphones from uh, Skull Candy, all kinds of good stuff in there. But let's talk a little bit about the fight. What happened in the cage tonight? A lot of action. Pat, he's real good. He, he caught me a lot of good ones. You guys were pretty evenly matched, it seemed. I'm physically, and, and your styles were very similar. Yeah, our styles were similar, but I had a bigger heart. The guy can't, I mean, he hit me a lot of good times, and I don't know, my heart just kept me pumping, man. And your heart persevered. You came away with a big win tonight. Congratulations, man. Thank you. I want to just thank Mike. I want to thank Shogun MMA, Rockstar, and uh, just everyone in my corner. Right on, man. Good job. That one delivered everything it was promised to be. Yeah, Mike, we talked about maybe they were gonna go to the ground and do some grappling, that didn't happen. The only time they went to the ground was when one guy landed a shot and you saw Patrick up kicking. And man, he, he had his hands full tonight, Mike, and unfortunately, he walks out of here, comes out of here with a loss. Well, you know, the guys from Hawaii, that we knew they were a tough team coming yeah, into it, absolutely. and they showed that they definitely were. We got more of the Ultimate Combat, don't go anywhere. In your lightweight division, we got the local loudmouth that just tends to get under people's skin when he meets them. He's like a fly, he's like a, a menace. He's like a menace. Oliver the Menace, uh, Brad Street, stepping in here, taking on a kid from California that got in here, stepped in here last time and dominated his opponent. He got Pete Baker, might get in here and do it. Pete Baker came in here and had an easy fight the last time he was here in town, he said. And he said, you know, Mike, give me the best you've got. I don't want any slots. I want the best you got. Well, guess what, Pete? You got it, brother. Lightweight knows bar. Check it out. Tell us, what does Ollie Bradtree have to do to step inside that cage and win tomorrow night? <laughs> First of all, if you ever gave me a fight that was actually my weight, that'd be cool. But either way, uh, 155, it's great. Um, <laughs> it means a lot to me. I'm um, having fun tonight. We're going to have fun tomorrow. Anyway, I'm going to fight my ass off, and we're going to go for whatever happens. So, Ollie, send him a message. What are you gonna? How, how's this thing gonna end? I'm gonna beat him. I, I'm gonna beat him. That's all that matters. That doesn't matter. Okay, that's it. That's it. Pete, right there. He's coming in. Ollie's coming into this thing as confident as ever. What are you gonna have to do tomorrow, man, to make sure that you walk out of this thing with the victory? I just want to fight. That's it. That's it. I liked it right there. Not a lot of talk to this guy. Tell us how, how's this thing gonna end, man. Right there, shake hands, best of luck to both these guys. Nope, you had your chance. If it were Ollie's choice, he'd sit here and argue about it all night long. Oh yeah, he would, Mike, but uh, you talked about it before. Oliver Bradstreet is one of those guys, Mike, that when he fights, the things that he says, the attitude that he has, people just want to fight this guy and they want to beat him up. Something about that face just makes you want to punch it. <laughs> but I got to tell you, Ollie can back up every word he says. You see here, Five foot seven hundred and fifty pounds. Ollie really should be fighting one thirty-five. He's weighing in with rocks in his socks to be one fifty. Oh, he is, Mike, and that's why you heard him give me that little jab. You know, if we could get fights for him, uh, Ollie, we're gonna get you as many fights as you can handle, brother. And uh, Pete Baker came here to fight. Get past this one before you uh, start well, calling the shots, right? Pete's five foot nine, one hundred fifty-four pounds. That's a pretty lean one hundred fifty-four pounds. You don't see an ounce of fat on that no. kid. He's in great shape and uh, pretty intense individual. Job. Yeah, Mike, you look in his eyes. He's got it. He's got that look. He he wants to come in here and do some damage but a lot of guys have had that look going up against Ollie and then the first two minutes of the fight that look has gone away well Johnny you gotta give this kid credit he's he's fighting a kid that's got 30 plus fights he's coming in here and he's not waiting for Ollie to take the fight to him he came right at Ollie yeah and now, uh, now Ollie Mike's got, got that body lock there and we've seen Ollie take a lot of people down from this just by squeezing just like that but uh, Pete Baker's gonna make a pay for it he threw a punch right there and landed well you know Ollie was taking his time there partially I think because he's hung over from last night and moving a little slow today. I just don't understand this kid. Well, He's at the weigh-ins with a beer in his hand well, after he weighs in. Yeah, that's not the first time that we've seen that, Mike. <laughs> Oliver definitely is that guy. But that's why a lot of people like him, too, Mike, you know, because he is kind of that... Uh, the guy you see down at the pub with a beer in his hand talking about his glory days. Well, I don't still get it him out. because I wear every beer I've ever drank around my waist. And look at all. He's in great shape. And I don't know how he does it. <laughs> Mike, some people are just born with him. They just, they just got it, Mike. Yeah, they got it. And right now, all he's got, Pete Baker, in a pretty bad spot. He's riding him like a pony, just kind of letting him buck until he wears down. And then now he's scooting him over to the gate, the fence there and, and going to punch him a little bit. Well, yeah, Mike, he's not going to give him any room to do any of that, uh, that buck and, and to, to get him off there. And he's See right there, he had an arm trapped and he threw some punches and there it is again. 
Oliver Bratchy knew what he does. Well, there you go, right there. I think, you know, Ollie finally woke up out of his comatose state and... <laughs> Realized and, uh, he was in a fight? Yeah, he, boy, when he, when he comes alive, he comes alive. He's a vicious fighter. Uh, it just takes sometimes a little bit to get him going. It does right there, but you see now, uh, he Baker left an arm, arm behind, and uh, Ollie's going to grab a hold of that thing, and that's it. Fight's How over. How long ago was it that Ollie didn't even know what an arm lock was, and now he's throwing him on as slick as could be? Boy, that thing just kind of presented itself, and Ollie took it. Almost too easy for him. Pete Baker's pissed off. Oh, yeah, he's pissed. He wants to punch that face, and I guarantee people watching this at home are going to be calling us to step in there and punch Ollie in the face. I don't want to punch that kid right in the face right now, come to think of it. So if you're 140 pounds and think you can take Ollie, give us a call. Come punch him in the face for us. Log on to Crocs.com to check out all in their newest footwear apparel. Oliver Bradstreet's been around, man. The kid stuff, he knows the sport. You're very new, but we're going to get that instilled in you right here. Yeah, I can't wait to come back and fight again. I'd fight Oliver again anytime. I'll fight any of your guys' fighters. I'm a fighter, I love to fight. I appreciate everything you guys do, letting us come in the ring and fight. I appreciate my corner. I just wanna say thank you. Hey man, thanks to you. You know, you get in here, you do it. Tonight you were good, my friend, but just not good enough. But Sarah's gonna come over here and give you a gift back from our sponsors. Is there anybody that you need to thank right now, brother? Uh, God. There you go, P. Baker, everybody. Thanks for being a part of the experience, my man. Heart 8 Power Sports. UCE fans mention this ad and receive a free helmet with any ATV purchase. I was a little busy keeping that kid's friends from rushing the cage to fight you themselves. They don't like you, Ollie. They don't like you. Most don't. Most don't. Few do. And most get beat up anyway, right? I try. I do what I can, you know? Well, now, Ollie, but again, before the fight, you said, I will knock this guy out on his feet. And once again, you failed to follow through with your promise. I didn't promise. I said I was going to try. And you didn't try very hard. You tackled the guy and took him down on the ground. He tried to hit me. Jerk. All right, Ollie. And you did what you do. You, you, you took him down, and you beat him, and uh, that's what the menace does. Uh, yeah, feeling a little better these days. All right, give the shout outs, man. Great job. Right. Tough country, easy ride suspension, Airs Law Firm, the Army's cool too, you know, they're here. Uh, professionalartsgroup.com and everyone else who helps me out. Love you guys all. Mom, thanks for being here. Love you lots. Ollie, I gotta tell you, you fight so much, I've got that memorized. I'm proud of you again. You came through and did your thing. Great job, man. We got a little gift pack for you. Great job tonight. Awesome. Thanks, Mike. I think that was a, a game fight for a minute, and all he got position, and it was over. That was, was interesting for a minute on their feet, though. Well, absolutely. You know, Pete is one of these guys, Mike, that doesn't really train as much, but neither does Ollie. That's why this matchup was like, hey, it was going to be good. But Oliver Bradshaw, Mike, has so much experience. The kid is just, well, the toughest we have to offer. So what do you do, man? What do you do? What do you, do? you asked for it. We gave it. Get back to the drawing board. Come back. We'll give it to you again. We got more than open combat. Don't go anywhere. Finally, we have a kickboxing match, and finally, we have female fighters coming out here. Johnny Ritchie, I've been excited about this one fight all night long. Yeah, Lynn lights out Alvarez, uh, stepping in here, Mike, to take on Andrea the Killer Miller. Uh, and we've seen Andrea in the past, Mike. She is a tough, gritty gal. Alvarez, on the other hand, we've never seen her before, but talking to her trainers, talking to her, Mike. She's coming into this thing with bad intentions. Johnny, I, I talked to her today and I said, I love chick fights. She goes, you ain't gonna see one tonight. <laughs> We're gonna fight like the fellas, man. Let's get this going. Featherweight kickboxing, check it out. We always love when the girls get in here, uh, but Johnny, these, these are just not two average everyday girls. These girls are tough. <laughs> I like that, Micah. She comes from a pedigree. She's over there training uh, with some pretty tough guys. Uh, they, they said, hey, man, she hits harder than most of the fellas in the gym over at Shogun. Don't let those uh, glasses fool you. Well, she's had a lot of the fellas here in Utah chasing around the last day or two, trying to meet her, get her phone number. I just want to fight, so I was offered a fight, took the fight, and that's what I'm here to do, just bang. Um, this is actually an American kickboxing with kicks, no elbows or knees. Um, I have experience in American kickboxing. I actually wanted an MMA fight, but it just didn't work out that way. But I'm ready to submit someone, you know? Because I have heart, I train every day, and I just punch like a man, so I've been told, so be prepared. 
Well, so she's been told, Johnny. <laughs> she doesn't look like a man, I'll tell you that. Yeah, but there's a uh, Andrea the Killer Miller, and we know how hard this girl hits, Mike. We've seen it. We've seen mouthpieces go flying into the third row from you her know, fight. Andrea's not so uh, pretty to watch from a defensive posture. She's really offensive and a hard, hard hitter, as you mentioned. Um, well, I've been training a lot with the UCTC. There's a good crew of guys. Um, I really think it's going to either be a knockout or it's going to go all three rounds. On my end, of course. Hey, Lynn, I'm just looking for a good fight. You look like a good fighter. So am I. Let's do this. So it's either going to end early or not. Or not. Okay, so it could, it could go the distance or not quite the distance. I, I think it's not going to go the distance, Mike. All right, well, uh, she's covered her bases. Not, uh, <laughs> either way, it's going to have one of those two are going to have. Either way, she's going to be right at the end of this fight. Absolutely. Yeah. And a touch of the gloves, and right off the bat, Lynn Alvarez comes out of swinging. And throwing some kicks, Mike. Throwing a, some pretty uh, nice combinations together. I want you to do that. She fought it with the leg kick, and that thing landed. It looked good. You know, I said in the pre fight that Andrea Miller doesn't have a whole lot of defense, but she did. Did a great job of weathering those punches, taking them off the gloves, and just kind of hiding behind her defense. Uh, and things kind of settling in right here, and uh, some of those kicks and punches now starting to creep through. Yeah, they are, Mike. And, uh, Alvarez is just moving forward, and you can see there that Andrea's having to just cover up, and she's knocked her back to the fence a couple times, Mike. Andrea doing a pretty good job, in my opinion, of staying patient. You get a, a girl like this coming out and uh, throwing a lot of uh, punches like that, you have a tendency to try to uh, mix it up with them, and, and Andrea's just going to kind of let her throw a few punches here and get a little tired. Um, she threw a right right there, and on the way back, uh, Lynn threw a nice little kick. Oh, but this is what Andrea does. She lands those big shots. Hey, you found the way through uh, Lynn Alvarez's defense, and once she landed that first shot, it seemed like Lynn was just stunned for a minute there. <laughs> yeah, you said it right right then. She does it again. Lands a left and then a right, and uh, Andrea can hit hard. You know, she, I'm surprised Lynn's eating these shots the way that she has been. Well, Lynn obviously has a little punching power herself, but man, she leaves herself exposed after every punch, and boy, and Andrea's really starting to take advantage of that. Yeah, and Andrea's throwing punches right down the pipe, Mike, and she's landed a few of them that uh, knocked uh, Lynn's head back, but Lynn's doing a pretty good job of throwing kicks. I don't think I've seen Andrea throw one yet. Andrea doesn't believe in kicking. <laughs> she's a puncher, but you know, I, what I'm impressed with on Andrea is her defense thus far. In her past fights, we haven't seen much of that, but she's done a great job of blocking and counter punching, and once she's sensed that Lynn Alvarez got hurt, now she's laying on the leather. Yeah, Mike, she's just, uh, you know, trailing the fence here and landing big punches punches. She's just kind of knocking her all around. Throws that right out there to knock the guard down, then falls up with that left, and she's landed it a lot. Really doing a fantastic job here in the first round is uh, Andrea Killa Miller, and uh, with the ring of the bell there, boy, finishes strong. <laughs> Andrea Miller, very impressive in round number one. Yeah, they, so he said how to jump in there and break that thing up, Mike. Well, uh, like he wasn't going to do that anyway. Anyways, yeah, you're right. <laughs> you're absolutely right. And but, the lovely uh, Tabitha bringing in round number two, Johnny. I've definitely got Andrea Miller up one round to nothing. Well, let's see what happens here, Mike. Okay, and you're going to throw some kicks, or she's just going to box it out like you said. What do you think? I Ed? predict she throws one kick in this round. <laughs> one. Okay, I'm going to keep my eye. I'm going to keep my clicker on it and see what she does. Oh, but Lynn throwing some punches down, Mike, and she landed one that uh, looked like it maybe rocked Andrew just a little bit. Lynn making a great adjustment in the corner there. She Now she uh, was setting Ooh. up her shots a little better and didn't leave herself exposed at the first round that was working for Ooh. her. But what well, you see right here, Andrew making a good adjustment as well. Yeah, and Lynn doing a pretty good job, Mike, uh, after Andrew was driving in there. She did a nice uh, front push kick to keep her away. <laughs> to keep her distance while she at least catches her breath. Absolutely. And you see, you can tell that's something they talked about in the corner there. Lynn Alvarez using that push kick to keep the spacing in her advantage. But, uh, you know, now Andrea's starting to get through past that front push kick. Well, let's see what she's going to do here, Mike. And now it looks like she's the one with her back against the fence, and Lynn's kind of pushing the pace. Oh, but that could just be a little rope-a-dope on Andrea's part to look to throw one of those and land it. Well, once again, Lynn Alvarez controlling the spacing, and that's what she was lacking in round number one. Doing a good job here in the second stanza, no doubt about it. But uh, both these girls seem to be getting a little bit tired, Johnny. Oh, for sure, Mike. Well, they haven't stopped punching yet. You know, this has been a, a good fight for the people because they're not just doing the one-punch hug. You know, they're in there mixing it up. And uh, the, Dave has, the only time Dave had to stop them so far was at the end of the round. So that's Absolutely. Well, you see, you know, when Andrea gets tired, kind of the knock on her is that she, she carries, puts her feet real close and crosses her 
feet quite a bit. Uh, but more, once she gets on a tear like that, she's hard to stop. Yeah, and she's throwing left and right and left and right. Oh, but then you see Lynn go, hey, you want one? Oh, man, she caught it with a good shot there, Mike. And wobbled her just a little bit. I don't know if that's fatigue or if she actually hurt her, but uh, you saw Lynn stammering around just a little bit, and she's she's definitely tired. Don't oh, yeah, Mike, she's tired. She's going to, you know, she can make it through this. She's going to have a minute rest. Oh, but Andrew lands another big shot that rocks her. <laughs> she landed a nice three or four punch combination there. <laughs> and I don't know how these girls do it because, you know, guys, they'd just be tired and huffing and puffing here. These girls really have thrown it out here for two solid rounds. <laughs> oh, and then right at the bell there, Andrea throws a big left. Yeah, Mike, you kind of talked about it, though. These girls fight with so much emotion, and they're so driven, you know, and you see right there, they, they don't just stop when the bell rings. No, they they, they want to keep rocking and rolling. They want to send you back to your corner with a little emphasis on it, and uh, <laughs> that's what Andrea Miller did there. I've got to give a round two as well. Uh, uh, Lynn Alvarez is definitely going to have to come out with something big in round number three here. Well, there's that kick you talked about, Mike, and uh, that's the only one we've seen uh, thus far. <laughs> <laughs> That's what makes it kickboxing. Ah, well, oh, there's oh, well, then a little back fist action there, and once Gosh. again throwing straight down the pipe, landed a few on Lynn. But Lynn, the determination in her face, you see, she really wants to land one of these big ones, Mike. I'll tell you what, though, what I'm, again, what I'm impressed with now, Andrea, she's gotten so accurate with her punches. Once she gets her range there, she seldom misses shots, and, and so far in this round, she's landed just about every shot she's thrown. <laughs> Throws another <laughs> push kick there, Mike, and uh, Alvarez just circling. She's tired. Tired of getting eaten shots like that, Mike, and she's, oh, and another one. What a game performance by Alvarez. Though. She's taking a lot of punishment, a lot of shots to the head, and she just keeps on coming. And you see right there a little pitter-patter of uh, three or four punches that landed. <laughs> She's obviously been training with the boys. You can tell sure. that. You can tell both these gals training with the boys because they're no strangers to getting hurt right there. Well, look at Alvarez, the shots oh. she's taken. Andrea throws two big hooks and a nice uppercut. You see it snap the head back of uh, Alvarez, Mike, and she's going to go in there and, and look for the same kind of setup. Just once again, timing those punches perfectly and just uh, the spacing now she's got down and then her timing is, is impeccable. She's landing every shot she throws. Well, you see Lynn right there, Mike, thinking about throwing a kick, and there's not too much uh, time left in this round, and Andrea's going to start pouring it on here, I think. Well, I don't think there's much to pour on. <laughs> I think Andrea's tired, as is Lynn Alvarez, uh, going to kind of finish up here. I thought that was the 10-second warning well, as maybe well. Not, maybe not, maybe not. Just some, some excited fan, maybe uh, Andrea or Lynn's boyfriend out there, you know, here getting excited. Maybe uh, her boyfriend was smacking his gum, <laughs> popping bubbles. Could very well be. <laughs> But uh, Lynn Alvarez, Mike, she's a little wore out. You see here, she's uh, only a few seconds left on the clock now. And Andrea's going to end this thing with some punches. Andrea knows the time is almost up, and she wants to finish strong here. Both these girls came out and gave a great performance. But, boy, you know, Andrea was just too much for Lynn Alvarez, and she's definitely going to walk away with a win here tonight. Well, hell of a matchup between these two gals. Uh, Mike, you see the sportsmanship right there between them. Uh, great fight. Uh, you know, Lynn Alvarez, she has nothing to be, uh, you know, hanging her head about, Mike. She fought a tough fight. She's looking to fight some MMA in the future, so maybe we can get her out here. Oh, she's think? got absolutely nothing to hang her head about. She came out here and represented her gym very well. <laughs> I'm not sure what that is. That's uh, Andrea's lip. Says she's got an itch. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's weird. That's right. That's <laughs> must, <laughs> she should get some calamine lotion. Some calamine lotion for that. But uh, <laughs> well, Let's listen to what the judges have to say about it. Unanimous decision. Well, that was unanimous, Johnny. And I think that was a pretty clear-cut victory. There's no question there. Andrea Miller certainly came out to do what she set out to do. She accomplished what she wanted to. Very impressive performance. Hey, congratulations, Andrea. You are the top female kickboxer in the state of Utah. Congratulations. Nice job. Pick up your ultimate combat experience fight wear and other mixed martial arts apparel at Against the Fence in the Valley Fair Mall. You got in here and you mixed it up. I want to know how you're feeling right now. I'm just happy that I had the opportunity to come out here. Thanks, Mike. And I'm happy he granted me the opportunity to fight her, you know, because she's pretty badass. Absolutely. I want to say so are you, Lynn. You know, you've you've got a lot of your uh, sportsmanship is key in this game, and you've got a lot of it. Uh, you're commending, you know, your opponent, and you fought hard. Don't take anything away from you. You got in here. You fought hard. It didn't go your way, but I tell you what, Lynn, you guys are more than welcome to fight for us anytime. When can we get you out here next? Next week, tomorrow, you know, like, First pro fight, you put me up against an animal, and I'm just happy I stood all three rounds, you know? Like, thanks. Hey, you did. You got in here and you wore it out. Hey, let's give her one more round of applause. Hey, Lynn, uh, we want to say, on behalf of Ultimate Combat Experience, Lisa's got some, some stuff from our sponsors. Thanks so much for being a part of the experience. Tonight, you were good, but just not good enough. Is there anyone you need to thank? 
Um, thank you, Andrea, for taking the fight short notice. Thanks to Rockstar, our sponsor, Shogun MMA, Ira, my trainer, and everyone who supports me. Thank everyone and thank God. There you go right there, Lynn. Thank you so much. We'll see you soon. Thanks for being a part of the experience. Thank you. Thank you so much. This Pulse Fight interview is brought to you by Hollywood Body Laser Centers, the best in laser hair removal. Give them a call for a free consultation, 563-1177. Andrea, Andrea, Andrea. You just keep getting better. That's all there is to it, man. You just keep getting better. It's all thanks to the UCT seeing everybody there. I would like to say we deserve some credit for that, but we really don't, Andrea. Uh, you, you're a self-motivator. You're a self disciplinarian you get yourself to the gym and you get yourself training each and every day and man it's it's paying off it's showing thank you for the opportunity enough said man we ain't even gonna chit chat much more than that andrea you got we got some partying to do right me and you oh, we got some people to think we're gonna go party tonight right <laughs> yeah absolutely i think i like to uh, i would like to thank taylor andrews and daniela for doing my hair which by the way Beautiful. Yeah. Um, I'd like to thank the UCTC, um, Seasonal Demolition. Um, shit, I don't even know about God. Copeland Trucking. Jesus. <laughs> and everybody else that comes out to support me all the time. Thank all you. All right, man. And you do bring the people in. They are so passionate about you. We got a gift pack for you. Great job. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. We didn't see a chick fight tonight, Johnny. We didn't see a chick fight at all. Those girls came out uh, like seasoned vets, Mike, and they they banged. They they fought hard. They fought a lot harder than some of the guys we've seen step inside this cage. So my hats off to both Andrea and Lynn tonight. Great fight. They represented themselves well. Definitely, we got more of the Ultimate Combat. Don't go anywhere.